Format. Living Waters presents On the Box. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday edition of On the Box. Here with Scotty. How are you, Scotty? I'm doing well today. What are you working glad on today? To, be, besides glad your to be segment, here. What are you working on today? Uh, back working on uh, the episodes for Europe. Which one are you working on right now? Um, the very last one, actually. Really? Romania. Yeah, I'm trying to align footage and get it ready for Eddie. Get it ready, ready for, Eddie. for Eddie. Ready for steady Eddie. That's right. Mark, how are you doing this morning? Oh, doing great. You know, I was uh, busy working on three different videos today. We have the Alicia video clip. Which, can't wait for that yeah, one Yeah, you know, there's out. a lot of people that can't wait for that video to be done. People think that we hired her as an actress and to say the things that need to be said. So uh, <laughs> was there somebody holding a cue card behind her as she spoke, as she was inside 180? Well, we will soon see. that. And then the behind-the-scenes video clip. And then uh, Ray is also... Uh, coming up with a video clip that he can send over to one of his publishers because his publisher said, hey, man, other authors need to get on board as to how to promote their own material. Can you please put together a video on that? So today oh. I worked on all three of those videos, working like a maniac as I ran in the studio at the last second. So they're all done? They are. Two of them are done, and the other one has probably 10% uh, more to go. Which one wow. has 10% more to go? That's Alicia. a lot of work. Ah! Yeah, so at least she just has a little bit more time, but uh, I need Ray's input on that, and uh, hopefully, Lord willing, that will be done today or tomorrow at the latest. Excellent. Hey, we're blessed today to have uh, six pastors with us from the uh, Orange County Southern Baptist Association. Yeah. Pastors T.A., yeah. Richard, Wiley, Joe, Dan, and Mike, and a late arrival. Not with the Orange County Southern Baptist Association, but with You're not Hope gonna Chapel mention in him, Hermosa huh? Beach. Pastor! Steve the Butcher Sanchez. Did you say the butcher? Pusher. Oh. Pusher, not the butcher. Wow. He's not the barber Steve, of Seville. He is, he is well, the we pusher. Learn a lot from that Steve, is definitely we? true. We learn that we're not nearly as excited as we think we are yes. being around Steve Sanchez. <laughs> Steve oh, did you see excited. Steve's video? Okay. Now, there was this little video war going on between Steve and Ray yeah. about who can hand out uh, you know, 118 DVDs the fastest, right? And uh, Ray got down to... 180. Uh, yeah, Ray got down to, what, uh, a dozen and six seconds, something like that? 15 and six seconds. And, uh, 11 seconds. 11 and 11 seconds. And uh, Pastor Steve, who's going to coach me from behind, did how many in less than five seconds? Uh, 16. And 16. 16. And he cheated! <laughs> he cheated in front of God and everybody. He cheated! How do you cheat? He handed all the DVDs to one person. Oh, well. And yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Wait till we drop them from the Eiffel Tower. So Who, Steve or the <laughs> DVDs? Oh, that's what, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, I guarantee you Ray is thinking about this, and he <laughs> will come up with something. He's not going to let I, us you know down. What, you know what? We don't want that. We do not want an evangelism war between Ray Comfort and Steve Sanchez. I mean, it would just be chaos around the world. <laughs> It'd be good chaos, though. A lot of They'd people would hear the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. But we're very grateful to have all the pastors in the studio with us. We're going to try our very best not to offend any of them, but we make no guarantees. <laughs> First question, struggling to find a church. Yeah. All right, pastors, listen up. Here's a question. I've really been encouraged by your show, especially as a college freshman trying to reach my campus. There are many Bible studies on campus, but it seems that most of them are just false converts. I've decided to put up flyer, <coughs> excuse me, flyers around school to find those interested in learning more about biblical evangelism. I have a question about church membership and evangelism for the show. The town I'm in is officially in the middle of nowhere. I don't know how you officially go there to the middle of nowhere. Uh, but they somehow got an Figure official, of speech. official designation. Of <laughs> official designation, middle of nowhere, and there are not many churches. My choice of which congregation to join may come down to two options. One, a church which has zero evangelism, and a church which seems to have some, but it seems very unbiblical. Which is the better option? I'm doing everything I can to travel a little farther to a more biblical church, but with no car, this, is, this may not be an option. So with pretty much no fellowship on campus right now, and possibly only these two churches to two choose from, I'm in a tough situation. What would you do, Scotty? Yeah. What would you do? Well, uh, 
this person would like us to tell him w- or her what church to go to, but we yeah. can't really do that. Um, I, I had some similar experiences, certainly, in trying to find a church, and that, that can be a difficulty. I spent, uh, I think, a uh, couple of years in my area and going from one to the other. You know, one thing that I want... You're driving now, what, 20, 30 minutes? From 50. Your 50 minutes. 50 on a Sunday morning, it takes that long? Yeah, yeah, Wow, okay. So That's with no almost traffic. An hour. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I had uh, the experience of uh, trying to make a difference in, in churches, trying to fit in, see what fit, and, and it was very difficult. But one thing I want to mention is uh, an issue of credibility. If you really want to make a difference, you're going to have to uh, gain credibi- credibility with the pastor. You can't just walk in the door. You can't and, walk right. in the door and, and say, look, this is where I'm at and this is how I feel and what do you think? And, uh, and then expect to start an evangelism class right. and turn everything around and all that. Y- um, you have to get to be part of a congregation yeah. and serve and show them your willingness and, and, and all of that. And, um, you know, really it is to trust God, uh, pray and seek his guidance and let him show you and then trust him for it yeah. and, uh, and, and make a difference that yeah. way. You know, I'm, I'm experiencing this somewhat right now. Our family, uh, just this last Sunday, uh, said goodbye to our church of 10 years. Mm. Uh, nothing bad going on in the church. Wonderful church, wonderful family, godly pastor, uh, one of the most tenderest shepherds I've ever met in my life. Mm. Been my pastor for the last 10 years. But we just sense the Lord calling us to be closer to our community where I'm doing a lot of of my evangelism right and uh and so we decided now is the time to make a move mm-hmm. never a comfortable thing under any circumstance good bad or ugly it's just tough uh to do that but i, I met with the pastor and one of the elders mm-hmm. to introduce myself to see where they were at yeah that's with, a good with idea biblical evangelism i already knew where they were doctrinally already knew where they were philosophically knew know many people in the church uh attended seminary with the pastor you know so i i have a good idea as to the framework of the church uh, but I wanted to know, can you support the crazy cross guy in Santa Clarita? Hmm. You know, c- uh, are you open to biblical evangelism? And fortunately, you know, they were. They just wanted assurance that, um, you know, you're not saying this is the only way to do evangelism. And my answer was no. So long as you're proclaiming the gospel biblically, right. do it however you want. So long as you're speaking the truth in love and you are proclaiming, in fact, a biblical gospel, it doesn't matter whether you're standing on a box or doing it at Starbucks or handing out tracts or or, you know, among family or friends or, or whatever. But now I'm the new guy. You know, I went from right. being, I went from being the different designated position. evangelist in the church to now being the new guy on campus, and they're checking me out too. Yeah. And it would have been a, a big mistake for me to go in like a bull in a china shop and say, all right, where's your biblical evangelism team? Oh, you don't have one? I'm going to be your new leader. No, the pastor of that church has got to guard his flock, yeah. you know, and protect his flock from those inside and outside the church. And so you got to be patient. I, my counsel to this person would be go to the biblical church. Go to the church where the gospel is being preached. Don't go to any church where the gospel is not being preached because it's not a church. It's just a social club for the spiritually disobedient. Mm. If the gospel is not being faithfully proclaimed, no matter what it says on the door, it is yeah. not a church. Good advice. So go to the biblical church. Be patient. Love the pastor. As you said, get to know the people, fellowship, uh, become a servant in the church, and don't walk in expecting to, to lead anything right away until the leadership of the church gets to know you. Yeah. Mark, what do you think? You know, that's exactly it. I mean, if you're part of the local body, everybody as part of the local body needs to be doing something with the gifts that they have. They need to be exerting their time, treasure, and talent to further the kingdom of God. So there's no evangelism that's part of this local church that's within your sphere of uh, residency. Well, you can start one. Not formally, perhaps, but you can go out and you can share your faith and you can invite another person to go along with you. And before you know it, uh, it just... It starts off a, just a huge wildfire. But if you're at that church, you should be serving. You should be cleaning toilets. You should be reaching out and upholding the arms of the senior pastor. Amen. You know, the senior pastor should be giving himself over to a study and to teaching and to leading the flock. So they may not have enough people to lead certain ministries. And that's where the body comes in. So you perhaps can be the individual. Notice I said perhaps, because you may not be that individual for that specific church, but you can be sharing your faith. And 
hopefully at that time, maybe you'll be uh, raised up. If not you, then maybe somebody else to be able to open up their mouths as they ought. So uh, serve at the local body. That's what you need to be doing. And if there's no evangelism team there, maybe the Lord will raise you up. But you need to faithfully share the, share the gospel, and you need to support your pastor. Amen. All right, switching gears. It's yeah. Thursday. Scotty's here. That mm-hmm. means it's time for I get another to do edition the, of the uh, Exodus case. What are you teaching us today? Um, well, uh, do we have the book graphic? Yes, no, maybe so. Um, I always like to show that because really I'm just doing a book report. Still on my Christmas and, list. And uh, this guy, uh, Leonard Moeller, is a scientist who applied his uh, re- research abilities um, to taking the Bible and using it like a travel log and seeing, well, if this is really true, there should be some indications of it. And so we've discovered a lot. Uh, Where we left off last time, they left the Red Sea, and the first stop was uh, what they called Mara, uh, and it means bitter springs, where the waters were cleansed. God uh, answered their prayers. He provided for them, and that's what he's doing over and over again. He's still leading them with a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. And, um, but he, it's very different on this side of uh, the Dead Sea. And again, we're in Midian, which is Saudi Arabia. And um, like I've said before, and I'll probably say it again, if you're looking in the wrong place, you're not going to find a thing. That's right. <laughs> but if you start looking in the right places, you're going to find a lot. And um, so... They are journeying through the, a really rugged, difficult uh, wilderness. Uh, the first place they come to is Elim, after Mara. And um, there's a movie, if you could go ahead and start that. I like to try to do a Googler thing because it makes it interesting to see the topography in the land. But It does give your segment an ooh-ah factor, no well, doubt. I- it's pretty neat. And uh, so that's an oasis that's still called LM. And I- in the Bible, there were 70 palm trees and 12 springs. And now there's hundreds of palm trees today. Uh, but there are still 12 springs there. And uh, so they were led there. And uh, the, the springs are, are still in use. And uh, God, again, is leading them back and forth in this uh, really rugged, difficult area, and um, there's not much food, there's, uh, I mean, next to none, what would you find out in the desert, and water, and so it's a constant issue, and uh, God is making them trust him, and uh, so they're wandering through this wilderness, by the time they left this area, uh, LM, it's 30 days since they left Egypt, uh, since the Exodus. And again, they're wandering, uh, not wandering, but led of God through the wilderness the, of sin and uh, the Dead Sea area, Midian, which is in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the mountains can rise to 8,000 feet in desert below. There's a, you can go ahead and stop that one. And uh, there's another picture, I think it's numbered uh, zero 01. And just to give you kind of a picture of some of the area there, really rugged, really desert, and uh, it's quite amazing. So after they left this place, they became very stressed, let's say. That's good on that, Danny. And uh, you know, they've got their wife and their kids, and they're out of food, they're out of water, And what have you brought us here for? Now, we can't forget the incredible things that God has done. The plagues of Egypt, the delivering a nation of more than two million people and all their livestock and cattle out of, uh, and across the desert, destroying the Egyptian army, parting the Red Sea, and now they're complaining. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I think last time I had said, you and I would complain. I, I rethought that. You know, Moses and Aaron believed God, and uh, they knew he had a purpose in what he was doing, and, and I would like to think that we would uh, too. But if you're going to focus on uh, your needs and not focus on God, your surroundings are going to take over. Um, 
so God uh, promised them that they would have meat to the full and bread to the full and uh, so he did just that there's um, another picture uh, number two the quail I you figure there were two million people well th if there was only one quail that's per person KFC. that's, a, that's, that's a, a lot of KFC going around there that's two million quail quail are small so starving people would want at least two each I could probably put away half a dozen quail so yep. that's four million quail all in one evening that fell on the camp and Josephus records that it covered the camp and uh, so they had just what God promised and he had also uh, told them that they would have bread to the full in the morning by the way while uh, God was speaking these things he uh, or telling these things to Aaron and Moses he said I hear their complaints I hear and when Aaron was describing that they would have uh, meat to the full and bread to the full the glory of God appeared behind them and they saw as he was talking about how God heard them and God appeared before them. I think uh, most of us miss that in the narration but uh, God definitely hears. In the morning there's another uh, picture of uh, gathering manna. What that picture uh, on the right is coriander seed which was kind of like what the manna would have looked like and they gathered it so two million plus people the uh, about two quarts each that's a uh, omer and uh, and uh every day um and i they had, had to gather it they had to gather day. it in the morning they had to so pluck the feathers they had to, yeah. it, it was something very different and i had written down um some statistics how are we doing on time we're getting out there aren't we um I can pick the rest of this up later because I, okay. I hate to skip ha! anything. Leave them hanging. I like that. There's so much to talk about, but I have a couple other pictures I'd like to show you. But we'll pick that up next time. Very good. All okay. Right. So yeah. you just have to be back next Thursday yeah. for Scotty's edition of The Exodus Case. Uh, Maria, girls, if you're watching, that book is still on my okay. Christmas <laughs> list. It's a little pricey, but I'm worth every penny to you. So you can get that book <coughs> this Christmas for me if you like. Yeah. Otherwise, Scotty's going to have to buy it. And, or Mark. Uh, ag again. This is my again, that's right, because you lost it once, I left, didn't you? I left. I won't lose mine. If you buy me mine, I won't lose mine. I left it in Israel. Since I can't get a rat, that tracking chip we were going to put under the rat skin, we'll put in the book so I don't lose the book. Another story. All right, what do we All got? All right, well, here we go. What do you tell a pastor? Question came into us. What do you tell a pastor who says the lost are not his priority? Mm. <laughs> I think we need some context. Yep. Okay, because a pastor of a church, his first priority is not the lost. Yep. He is called by God to shepherd a flock of believers. Hmm. And I think one of the reasons why so many pastors are burning out these days, I think the life expectancy or ministry expectancy of a pastor these days is like four or five years, uh, is because they spend all of their time or most of their time begging goats to act like sheep. They, they've got a lot of people who are playing church, people who think they're saved because they prayed a prayer, asked Jesus into their heart, wrote, their, wrote uh, the date in their Bible, but there's no change. They've never come to genuine repentance and faith, and so pastors are applying all of their giftedness, time, talent, resources, uh, biblical counsel into people who don't believe the Bible to begin with. You know, and so it's hard to be a pastor. I mean, I, I pastored a church for 18 months, yeah. and uh, and that was a challenge, even for a tiny, tiny little congregation, because you're constantly ministering to, to people, not only in word, but in deed, you know, caring, caring for the flock, and uh, of course, pastors who do love their people and do love God, do love to share the gospel with the lost, but their first priority is is to shepherd the flock that God has given them. So if a pastor says, well, you know, reaching the lost isn't my first priority, I would say, well done, good and faithful servant. If the pastor's saying, I don't care about the lost, well, then the pastor needs to examine his own heart to see if he's even in the faith. Right. And uh, Well, I, I, I looked at that and uh, realized there's not enough information there. Right, yeah. Um, but I did focus in on um, priority. 
um, but not in the same way that you did. Okay. Um, I, 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 I believe that our greatest example is Jesus Christ himself. And he said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And uh, there were many examples he gave. Uh, you know, with, uh, he said that uh, with Zacchaeus, when the Pharisees, the leaders, mm -hmm. uh, uh, complained uh, of publicans and sinners, you know. And um, also, uh, at Luke 15, that whole chapter, I think, kind of sets the tone of priorities that Christ had. Mm -hmm. um, publicans and sinners, um, after, and he gave them uh, a parable about the lost sheep. Lost coin, two uh, sons. That's right. If you had, uh, you know, one sheep that went astray, you would go and find it. And then you would rejoice. And all heaven rejoices over that sinner. And uh, so a pastor also, in along your lines, needs to lead by example. Sure. And that example is an encouragement to get the rest of the flock yeah. to participate, to alleviate the load yeah. but you can't ask them to go out if you're not doing it and uh so so there's a balance yeah, there and i agree yeah yeah mark what do you think you know absolutely i mean you you, you nailed it uh, what is the senior pastor's responsibility he's to uh, uh pray study teach preach have vision for the church that's what he's supposed to do you know we see the story in the book of acts where the widows were being neglected right and uh these uh, pastors or well, these apostles, they said, hey, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to um, leave what we're doing and go serve tables? No, I tell you what, hey, why don't you raise up faithful men filled with the Holy Spirit who can go and do these things? Now, that's not talking about evangelism necessarily, obviously, but the point taken is this. There's something that the senior pastor should be giving himself over to do, and that is getting vision for the church. He should be preaching and teaching and praying. That's what he needs to do. He needs to take care of the flock in which God has entrusted to him. That's what he needs to do. Now, with that said... The sheep are going to multiply after the shepherd, right? That's what's going to happen. So if the senior pastor from the pulpit is talking about reaching the lost, talking about his own encounters, uh, times that he's had handing out a track, you know, the sheep are going to catch the vision for that very thing. But what should the pastor be doing? He should be given over to the word of God. So is it not his first priority? Absolutely not. It shouldn't be his first priority. But when he's out and about and he's out on the streets and he's inside the supermarket, I'll tell you what, it's going to help him out if he has a track ready or a word to be uh, fit to be spoken. Yeah. So that is the context of the pastor. Hey, you know, one of the, uh, uh, my, my pastor for the last 10 years, one of the neatest emails or phone calls or, or texts I would get from my pastor yeah. uh, was always, Hey, hey, Tony, would you pick me up some tracks on your way home? Hmm. You know, uh, yeah, that would be an know, encouragement. Wouldn't that be great if there were more pastors out there who were, you know, leading, like you say, leading by example while yeah. at the same time having their priorities in check to make sure that they're serving as That's God why we like Steve Sanchez. So. Steve Sanchez! <laughs> I was all calm until you mentioned the man's name. What do you do about someone who you know but didn't invite... <laughs> <laughs> shows up to preach, but they're preaching a prosperity gospel. Yeah, this is uh, one that I've run into a lot of times, and there's something simple that you can have as a, uh, to fall back on, and that is institute a policy. And yes. anybody who wants to get on the box, you say, well, you got to show up here, prove that you're faithful, give us a chance to see what you're all about, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I've done with the team that I lead out on uh, Third Street in uh, Santa Monica. Right. Uh, and everybody who's on the team signs, agrees to this. Uh, if you're not on the team, and if I personally haven't, you know, talked to you and and uh, found out what you understand about the proclamation of the gospel, you're not getting on my box. If you mm -hmm. just show up and say, "Hey, I'd like to open air preach," great. You're not doing it today. Watch, learn. We'll talk about it, and you can tell right away where a person is. Yeah. If if someone comes up and says, "Hey, I want to preach," and mm -hmm. you say, "Well, we don't know you," and uh, you know, we're real careful about making sure that. But Only I came all the way I from New York yeah, I, uh, just to do this. I've yeah. been watching Ray Great. Comfort. That's I want to do this. That's wonderful. No, you're not preaching today. And if they get angry, then you know what this is all about. Yeah. It's about them wanting to get up on the box and preach. It's not about the gospel. It's not about the lost. It's about, it's about them. So, um, Better to be cautious. Yeah. So you're, you have to run the risk of offending hmm. a person 
by not letting him get on the box because you don't want to offend Christ by letting someone take what is basically a pulpit out on the streets and preach something other than the one true gospel. And a policy gives you something to fall back right. on. It puts the we pressure there, everybody. not on you. Yeah. Right. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, you, you can't allow the guy to share the, the pulpit with you. I wouldn't do it inside the church, and I wouldn't do it outside the church. You know, we, we have two different messages. Um, I'm not going to be dealing with uh, positive speech, faith, and uh, you need to give uh, your finances now in order to increase your own material wealth. I mean, it's, it's just silly. We have two different messages. We're heading two different directions. I'm not judging their salvation, but I'm just simply saying, what are they going to share when they get behind the pulpit or when they get yeah. up on that box? I can't, uh, I can't allow that to happen. Yeah. And I would encourage them to maybe go hand out some tracks in another area, another direction. But I would, if it got down to it, say, hey, that person's not with me. That's right. All right, we got time for one more. I leave tracks on bulletin boards around my town. So do the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Tarot Card Readers and the New Agers. Should I take theirs down and throw them away, or do I leave them up? I've been throwing them away. If they leave an email address, I email them the good person test, but they never respond. So... I laughed out loud when I heard this one. I looked at this and I says, I like this person. Guy, girl, I'm not sure who it is, but... Um, yeah, it takes a great deal of boldness, and, um, you know, there is that that you don't want to offend somebody, but also there is the standing for Christ and standing f for what you do believe and know what's right, and um, I kind of like this. I, you know what? I do, too. I mean, I was going back and forth, well, they have a freedom of speech and yeah. whatever. They're, they're preaching lies, and if you love people, yeah. if you care about people, you know, I'm not going to put a good person track next to a tarot card. I'm going to either put the good person test over the tarot card, or I'm going to take down a tarot card. Mm -hmm. You know, and if someone doesn't like it, get over it. I'm over it already. Mark, what do you think? <laughs> you know, absolutely. That, that's it. You know, there's a Starbucks, uh, okay, there's a coffee shop, sorry, um, that likes to have an open mic, and you can share whatever you want to share. Now, I would have no problem inside of a coffee shop uh, going after somebody who is a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness or before somebody who believes in tarot readings. I just allow truth to prevail. You know, so I have no problem, no issue with that. But if I see their pamphlets hanging around, yeah, I'm going to grab a hold of them and I'm going to throw them not in the, the closest trash can, but in a trash can that's uh, farther away so that they don't find those. Uh, or if I have the ability, maybe I'll get a, uh, a little stamp and put a stamp over it that says uh, needgod.com or uh, this is heresy. Um, whatever. You, maybe to your website. I don't know, Tony. So, hey, if uh, you've got qu <laughs> my website is livingwaters.com. We welcome everybody here to hear the gospel. So, uh, But we are out of time. Hey, send us your questions on the box at livingwaters.com, on the box at livingwaters.com. Uh, we want to try to answer as many questions as we can on the show. If you take issue with anything we said today, we'll read those too. Right, on the box Tony. At on the box at livingwaters.com. And, uh, and we'll look at those, and if uh, you have a rebuttal to something we've said, maybe we'll share it, and then we'll just rebut right back. <laughs> anyway, until tomorrow, we'll hear the second and have a break. Living Waters presents On the Box.